So how do you do that? Convenience is defined as the opposite of inconvenience. And in the case of a car, inconvenience is the time where you wait for your car and you can't drive it while you do want to do that. Right? It's called the stop at the petrol station. You drive all the time, it's convenient. When a car goes, it's great. You stop at a petrol station, you want to get out of there as fast as you can. What you do at a petrol station is you buy kilometers. And I'll ask most of you, maybe other than the students in the back, how often do you fill up your car? And the random answer we get is about once a week. For some people it's every three days, five days, nine days, but most of us remember it's about once a week. My wife never stops, by the way. It's always me that fills up. Uh, but um, that's another answer we get. My wife doesn't stop because we're both on electric cars. Um, so we said 50 times a year is sort of the bar of convenience. And you ask people, how long do you spend at the petrol station? And the answer is always five minutes. It ends up being about seven to eight minutes, but we forget the ice cream part and the entry and the credit card part and the, the other tank we can't really take care of unless we go somewhere. And all that stuff takes about seven, eight minutes. But we said if everybody remembers five, then that's our bar, 50 by five. That's the definition of convenience. So how do you make an electric car based on the science and the technology we have today that will stop less than 50 times for less than five minutes, will drive as far as you want at high speed with five seats with great convenience when the battery technology that we have today limits you at about 160 to 200 kilometers without making huge sacrifices in the shape of a car. You see, we didn't want to wait for the invention of the great mythical battery we've all been hearing about for the last few decades. 160 to 200 kilometers is what we can put in the car today. And so we came up with the following solution. You need to put energy into the car in two forms. And we need to know that car is usually a social device that is parked 22 hours a day. It's most of the time parked in two locations, half of the day at work and the other half at home. And we've decided to go build the largest extension cord on Earth. It looks like this. This is a charge spot. They, you'll find them in parking locations all over Australia within two, three years' time. And this charge spot does three things. One, it makes sure that if a kid comes up and puts a wire into it, nothing happens. F safety first. Second thing it does, it makes sure if your friend comes to your home and plugs in, you don't pay for the electricity. Friendship, next, right? <laughs> and it does a third thing that's really magical. Together with the car, it actually has a conversation that allows us to decide who gets to charge at which point in time during the day. Because if you don't flatten the curve, at 8 o'clock and at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the entire grid goes down. As you plug all the cars in Australia, as they come to work and as they come back home and you turn on the air conditioning, you'll get a spike of immense proportion. How big of immense proportion? For Australia to supply electricity to all the cars, if it's not managed correctly, in other words, I get to charge whenever I want to, will cost $60 billion of new electric infrastructure, generation and transmission. Now, there are some people in that industry who love the sound of $60 billion <laughs> of new generation and transmission used for two hours in a day. The rest of you will pay for it. And what we said is, we can actually figure out a way to decide which cars charge at which point in time and then flatten it across the entire day and the cost then of infrastructure addition to the grid is an absolute resounding zero. Because there's enough capacity on the grid to charge the cars, just not all of them at the same time. And how do you do that? Lots of software in the car and lots of software in the back end that answers the following question. Will this car move in the next hour and with what probability? That's all we ask the car. What's the probability you will move in the next hour? And then we rank all the cars according to the probability 
And the ones that have high probability take energy, and the ones that don't wait in the back. And throughout the entire day, this dance happens every three seconds. As the utility basically says, I got power for 20,000 cars, 100,000 cars, 50,000 cars in this grid, in this point, at this time. You do it by keeping all the information inside the car so that we can't answer the following question, where is my husband? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> now, that allows us to do some real nifty magic. Your car, whenever you come into it, will be topped off. You come into your car, you plug it, and by the time you came back, it's full. It's like having a contract with Shell for a tiny truck to follow you around the country, and whenever you stop, it'll fill you up. That solves one problem. In other words, if you, don't, if you go back, home work, home work, downtown back, retail back, most of the time going within that 200 kilometer range, you just got the ultimate convenience. You never stop. What happens when you want to go long distance? So we were told in the past that an electric car has to stand and wait, and we figured out if you want to stand and wait, you go on a bus. So we figured we have to put energy into the car while you're driving long distance without waiting for the battery to charge. And what we did is we went back in history and we looked at an example for what we did before we had cars, when we wanted to go long distance. When you went in a horse and carriage on a long distance ride, you'd ride the horses, you get to a spot where you'd switch the horses and keep going with the cart. So we did the same thing. If you put the video on, you'll, you'll see that what we did is effectively create a battery switching mechanism. You drive your car, but you switch the battery. This is from Yokohama. This is about two months ago in Japan. Normal SUV converted to electric. It goes into a, a device that looks very much like a car wash. We've elevated it a bit so that we can do uh, the, as I call it, the Asian innovation model, also known as the 10 megapixel camera. Um, where people could come in and take photographs of how we did what we did. But what you'll see is a plate comes up and tells the car, I'm ready to take your battery. And the battery comes down. So this is the plate. It comes underneath your car. Usually that will be already done before you came in. We just demonstrated the whole thing. And about the second number 20, as you'll see on the screen up there, Four hooks release the battery from the car. These hooks are actually from the bottom of the F F-16. Uh, they usually work really, really fast. We slowed them down. Um, and the battery comes out. A full battery comes in at the same place, elevates itself up to the same location. And the car is told, we're ready for you to pick it up. And it picks up the same battery, the same place. And now you're ready to go. The entire cycle, start to end, 40 seconds shorter than the time you have to go through your credit card in a gas station, petrol station. And at this point, you're ready to go for another 200 kilometers. In other words, if you went 600 kilometers, if you went Sydney to Melbourne, even if you had to switch twice or three times or even four times if you wanted to, still be faster than the petrol refill to the car. Now, you all know that even if you had to switch only twice, on that road, if you have kids, you're stopping five times. But we didn't take that as a permission to stop you if we wanted to. These two elements together, the extension cord, known as this charge spot, and the battery switching system for the same region actually cost less than the petrol stations for that region for the same amount of cars. How can that happen? because you stop less to switch batteries than you would to fill up on petrol. You actually will end up stopping about 10, 15, 20 times a year instead of stopping 50 times a year. And the urban commuters will probably never stop. The combination of these two elements actually creates the new energy downstream mechanism replacing petrol stations, trucks, refining, etc. And it guarantees convenience. 